So then, that's it, huh? No new bifurcations, just all the same ones that we saw back in Volume 1. Hmm, come on, what do you think? Thus far, what we've been doing is taking two-dimensional systems and decoupling them, breaking them up through linearization into one-dimensional systems where one of them has a one-dimensional bifurcation inside of it. But there do exist bifurcations that are fully two-dimensional, that can't be split up and decoupled and reduced to a one-dimensional bifurcation. And here is one of them. This is called the Hopf bifurcation, and it's in 2D continuous time. Here is the normal form. dx dt equals mu times x minus omega times y plus c times x times quantity x squared plus y squared. dy dt equals omega times x plus mu times y plus c times y times quantity x squared plus y squared. Now we've got a bunch of different variables going on here. C is a non-zero constant. Omega is a non-zero constant. And mu, like always, is our parameter. Now, this system has an equilibrium at the origin. That's the only equilibrium that is in this system. Let's take a look at what is happening at the origin by writing this out in a linear form. So if I think about the derivative of my vector-valued variable x and y, then I have the linear part out in front that is represented by multiplying x, y by the matrix mu omega minus omega mu. And then I've got the nonlinear terms, this constant c times x times x squared plus y squared and y times x squared plus y squared. Now, writing it out in this way is going to make it very easy to analyze this equilibrium. So what happens there? Well, let's do what we do. We've already linearized this function so that we can see the derivative at the origin is the matrix mu omega minus omega mu. Now, recall that omega is non-zero. That's good. That means that the eigenvalues for this matrix are mu plus or minus i omega. We definitely have a complex conjugate pair of eigenvalues. Now, from this, it is clear what is happening at the origin. If mu is negative, then the real part of this eigenvalue is negative. We have a spiral sink. If mu is positive, then we have a spiral source. And if mu equals zero, then we have a pure imaginary pair of eigenvalues, and that is, of course, a center. But is it? Recall the Hartmann-Grobman theorem says, hmm, not so sure about that. In fact, because as mu passes through zero, we're changing the type of equilibrium. Going between a spiral sink and a spiral source, we've got a bifurcation here. Now, it's kind of an unusual bifurcation in that you're not changing the number of equilibria. You're going from one to one. You're just changing the type of equilibria. And that's it. That's all that's happening. Apparently, there are no other equilibria in this system. There are no other changes to this equilibrium. Only at mu equals zero, you go from a spiral source to a spiral sink or vice versa. That's it. We've got it all figured out.